Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's web conference, Fast Track Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management Tech Talk. Today's topic is asset management. My name is AJ and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Microsoft Teams live events. The audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web, web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. Participation in the meeting today indicates your consent to being included in the meeting recording. Attendees may access the web conference recording via a link that will be delivered by mail within five business days. If you have questions for your presenter or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions during the presentation. Now on to the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Sachin Gandhi, Senior Solution Architect, and helping out with Q&A, we have Dana Bork, Supply Chain Program Manager. Sachin, over to you. Hey, thanks, AJ. Um, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, Tech Talk on Asset Management. Uh, today we will uh, take a quick look at what functionality the Asset Management module in the 365 Supply Chain Management offers us. Uh, so moving on to uh, um, what we're going to cover in this tech talk and what we are not. So we're going to take a look at the key concepts around asset management, uh, kind of take a look at the configuration uh, needed uh, to work with asset management. And also uh, I'll try to provide some implementation guidance and examples uh, during the during the hour. Uh, we're not going to go into a lot of the detailed scenarios, given that we have limited time today. Uh, I will try to not to go too deep into the costing aspects, although I will at least show you how the costing uh, for a work order would work out. And we are not going to cover uh, the upcoming integration with field service and some of the other uh, um, topics uh, related to asset management today. So uh, what you would uh, get out of uh, the next hour here is uh, a good understanding of what asset management uh, is in D365, how you can do corrective or reactive maintenance using uh, asset management uh, and how you can uh, create your uh, maintenance plans and execute on those maintenance plans for preventive maintenance and uh, how you can kind of manage your work orders and execute against your work orders and schedule resources uh, to go and work on uh, uh, the, the maintenance activities. So you'll take a look at that. Uh, I would uh, keep this uh, kind of light on the PowerPoint slide and uh, basically try to be more uh, in the demo, uh, um, more demo and actually show you the product and, and walk you through the various scenarios uh, in the live demo. So uh, what is asset management? So asset management is basically any uh, maintenance or management activities that you do around your physical assets, uh, whether those are fixed assets like building, plants, machinery, or any kind of moving assets, whether vehicles, ships, equipment. Uh, what asset management allows you to do is to plan, optimize, execute, and track uh, all the maintenance activities uh, related uh, to your asset maintenance. Uh, and uh, it helps you kind of track cost uh, for these maintenance activities um, and, and, and be able to then sort of get analytics on top of, uh, top of all the data that we will have in asset management. So if you look at uh, the various asset management models uh, and levels of kind of maturity, uh, the least mature will be the kind of reactive maintenance. We only would go to and maintenance when something breaks, uh, stops working, and we are forced to kind of go and, and perform some reactive maintenance, break fix maintenance on that asset. So that's number one here. Then uh, we, 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 to avoid those reactive maintenance because they are highly impactful, very costly for us. Uh, we, we try to go and sort of say, let's do some scheduled maintenance so we have less reactive maintenance. So that's where we want to start moving into the proactive uh, maintenance area. Um, and usually the scheduled maintenance done is that, okay, we're going to service this asset every quarter or every month or every week, depending on the asset and the need. 
Uh, and then the the other the, this next level in maturity would be the the condition based maintenance where we kind of track the usage of uh, the asset. And as the asset gets used so many times, let's say there's a blade and that blade gets used so many times, then we go say, OK, we need to go and replace the blade uh, in terms of maintaining the quality and maintaining the health of the asset. So, so, so asset management also allows you to kind of monitor uh, usage uh, or counters on an asset, uh, and uh, you can generate uh, maintenance orders or work orders uh, based on conditions. Then comes the predictive maintenance. So this is where uh, we can learn from the data, understand when an asset could break, and sort of predict that, and based on that prediction, we can go and sort of generate a work order to go and service the, the assets. So, so that's kind of, you know, going to another level of maturity there. And the topmost would be the cognitive maintenance where uh, not only we are able to predict when the assets going to, uh, you know, uh, need maintenance, but there is sort of an autonomous, autonomous function built in that goes and actually uh, does the maintenance automatically. Uh, so that's uh, that's kind of the levels of maturity. I think with with the asset management, you can cover the one, two, and three pretty easily. We can start looking at four, five would be something that I think if the asset has the capability to sort of self heal, then we can start looking into that as well. Okay, uh, what functionality does asset management cover? So uh, if you actually look at D three sixty five. Uh, we can cover all the way from acquired to retire life cycle of an asset. Uh, these gray uh, boxes here uh, basically uh, represent the functionality we always had in the product with our fixed asset module, uh, where we basically have fixed asset, we capitalize on those fixed assets, we take depreciation on the fixed asset, and we kind of you know have the integration with financials there. Uh, and then all these uh, these purple boxes is what the new functionality we have added as part of the asset management module, uh, which allows you to define your functional locations, define a structure of an asset, uh, and then uh, basically be able to schedule maintenance uh, and create your work orders, uh, create your maintenance checklist, create your maintenance rounds. Uh, there is also a mobile function to this where we have a mobile app uh, where you can basically have a technician carrying a mobile app, looking at the work orders assigned to him and going and executing on the work orders and updating uh, the work order uh, state from, 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 from a mobile uh, device. Uh, so we also have that. And we also have a scheduling board in terms of scheduling our resources uh, for, for, for going and actually executing on a work order. So obviously everything built here is built on the D365 stack. Uh, uh, so so we, we, we have the full support of the D365 framework and platform. Uh, we also have the dual write integration uh, where you can then sort of build additional power apps and leverage Microsoft Flow and Power BI uh, on, on, on top of uh, the entities uh, that, that are there in asset management. OK, so I, like I said, I don't have too many slides. I'm just going to kind of jump into the demo and kind of walk you through uh, the reactive maintenance as well as the preventive maintenance uh, scenarios uh, in the product. So let me switch over to D365. OK, there I am. So uh, if you look into the 365, you will find that there is an asset management module uh, here, and it has a very really common uh, theme here where we have our workspaces. So two, there are two workspaces out of the box. You can always create more. Uh, you have assets, functional locations. Uh, we have maintenance requests, so somebody can see something that, that needs maintenance. They can generate a maintenance request. We will take a look at that. Uh, we can we have work orders and work orders is what actually is the is the document that sort of you use in terms of uh, you know what needs maintenance and what are the 
uh, what are the hours logged against uh, maintenance, who is doing that maintenance, that all functionality would be in the work order. So work order is kind of is central uh, to asset management. We have work order pool, so if we have we, we have a large maintenance crew and we want to kind of create different work order pools uh, in terms of assigning uh, those work orders to them, then we can create those pools. We have maintenance downtime activities where we can register downtimes on various assets and try to get our maintenance activities done during those downtimes. We have procurement, so if we need to acquire a spare part or replace a part on an asset, then we, we also have integration with, uh, with purchase orders and purchase requisitions. Uh, there is a maintenance schedule, uh, so if you have a lot of maintenance activities, you can basically plan those maintenance activities uh, and, 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 and execute on them. And then you also have a little bit of functionality around asset loan where let's say uh, a motor on uh, on a machine gets broken and you have a replacement, you can loan uh, another motor for, for a while to prevent downtime on the asset. So uh, to start with where I'm going to start is first functional location. Since we are talking about physical assets, uh, physical assets will always be installed in the functional location. The first thing to start in this module would be to go and define your, your functional locations. So here uh, I will come in and I will define a few assets. So here I would come in and say, uh, so I'll define uh, a very high level functional location called Bellevue Campus. And I don't want a parent for this. Uh, and functional location type. So we can go and define various functional location types. Uh, I'm just going to select area for this and keep it simple for the demo. Okay. Then I am going to create another asset and I will call it uh, uh, this. And here, office building A is a child of the Bellevue campus. Again, the functional asset type is area. And I'm going to create another asset, call it office building B. And the, and the Bellevue campus is the parent for that as well. And set up the area. Okay. So I have basically created uh, a hierarchy of my functional locations. Now the second step would be to go and install some assets at these locations. So let's go and create some assets and then we will install them at, at those office buildings. So let's come into asset management, uh, common <coughs> assets active assets and let's go ahead and create a few assets here. So I'll create an air conditioning unit. Uh, okay. you starting now and the asset type. So you can define different asset types. So anything could be an asset type. Let's say you have a vehicle or a company car that could be an asset type. And that asset type could have a lot of defaults that you can define on it in terms of what kind of maintenance is needed on it. So that's kind of a, a key that you can use in terms of like, defining a lot of parameters around, around those assets. Um, and you can also define manufacturer. You can even go down to the level of having different models for that manufacturer registered here. So if, 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 if all that information is here and you need to go and contact the manufacturer or figure out what spare parts might be needed for that particular asset type, it's easy for you to identify. So here I've created uh, my first asset. Let's create another asset. So I will just call it air conditioning unit B. Again, it's an air conditioning unit. Same manufacturer. And click OK. All right. So I have a couple of assets uh, created for me here. Air conditioning unit A and air conditioning unit B should be somewhere here. So there we go. 
So now uh, I have two functional locations and I have two assets, so I could go and sort of start associating my assets to my functional location. So if I go back to my functional locations and I choose uh, Office Building A, and I just hit on Install Asset at Location. So here I can go and select uh, the asset to say Air Conditioning Unit A is installed at Office Building A. And uh, I will go and install uh, asset air conditioning unit B at office building B. So I'm just keeping it simple for a demo purpose, but you can have a pretty complex, uh, complex and deep uh, location hierarchy as well as various, uh, various assets installed at the uh, locations. And to see your hierarchy, then you will kind of come in here into assets and go into asset view. If I look at asset view, now it's showing my high level location because it doesn't have any parent, which is my Bellevue campus. And if I expand here, I see the two buildings within that campus. And within those buildings, I see the two assets that I have installed. OK, so we have locations, we have assets. Uh, now let's kind of look at the reactive maintenance scenario first. So let's say uh, there is somebody out there uh, that uh, at building A, and he notices that even though the thermostat stayed at you know at a at a, at a, at a cooler temperature, the air conditioning system is not cooling. So uh, that person could have a mobile app uh, using the the mobile apps we have here. So you could you could actually go in the mobile the manage mobile app uh, menu and you will see that there is an asset management mobile app here uh, that you can publish and uh, once you download the dynamic 365 supply chain uh, app on the phone and and connect it to your environment then you will be able to kind of work with that mobile app uh, there is documentation on that here so this is how uh, the mobile app would kind of look like where you can go and create maintenance requests. And if you are a technician, you can also go and execute on those work orders that might be assigned to you. Uh, so, so here for this demo, what we will do is we will go and create the maintenance request through the web app today, but you can also do the same thing from a mobile app. So here uh, I am in the um, maintenance request management workspace. Here I'm going to click on create new maintenance request and uh, I can basically say this is of type uh, directive. I need properly. And we can say where it is not working, so that will be uh, my Office building A and the person creating the maintenance request could identify the asset or he could just kind of leave it at the function location and the person executing on that uh, on that maintenance request or reviewing the maintenance request can go and actually fill that uh, maintenance request. Uh, but here I will just go in and kind of say, hey, uh, I, this is probably the the asset that's not functioning properly. And I click OK. That creates a maintenance request uh, for our maintenance department. So the maintenance department would probably have a screen in front of them like this, uh, where they are looking at the maintenance request management workspace, looking at the maintenance uh, request that doesn't have a work order associated with it yet. So if I refresh, I should see that, OK, my maintenance request is here. Now it's new. They can see the service level, so they can actually prioritize and work on the 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 ones where the service level uh, is 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 higher or or has needs more priority. It's more urgent. So here, uh, uh, when the maintenance supervisor is kind of looking at these requests, and he can he 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 might have several of these because the several people working in that building might have reported the same issue. He has the option of going in and uh, basically uh, going in and either rejecting uh, that maintenance request if it's a duplicate or for some other reason, 
or he can say, OK, yeah, uh, I need to send somebody to take a look at it. So let me mark this maintenance request kind of in, in, in progress. So, so you have this lifecycle state, which is actually pretty flexible. I will show you that in a, in a minute where you can define the lifecycle state that makes sense for your business scenarios and basically, uh, you know, use use those lifecycle states. So once I have a maintenance request, I could go and uh, generate a work order from that maintenance request. So here I will click on create work order. It has been canceled for some reason. OK, let's try this again. OK. OK, so I think there's some. OK, let's take a look at the lifecycle state for uh, these maintenance requests. So let me. Maintenance request, maintenance request at lifecycle states. And if I come into lifecycle state right now, it's in progress. And if I go to the general tab, if you see here, uh, it has the allow creation of work order disabled. So I can go in and basically set that to yes. So this is all very configurable and you can you can define uh, at what state what activities are allowed and what activities are not allowed. So now that I'm going to allow creation of work order, if I go back to my maintenance request management, select uh, that maintenance request and create work order, I should be able to go and create a work order. In terms of creating a work order, I need to define what maintenance job type it is because that's what's going to control is what kind of resources I could go and send to work on that work order. So I will say, I don't know what's wrong with air conditioning. I'm just going to send somebody to inspect and figure out what's 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 not working correctly. So I will just select maintenance job type of inspection and click OK. So uh, now you will see that I have a work order created here against that maintenance request. So if I click on the work order, I am now looking at the work order. So if we look at the work order, it has a few things here, the work order number, what kind of work order it is, what is the criticality and service levels that kind of defaulted from the maintenance request. You can have a hierarchy of work orders, so you can have parent work orders and related work orders. Um, and also what the cost type it is. So you could uh, you could basically uh, later on kind of dissect your maintenance cost into how much did we spend on corrective maintenance, how much did we spend on preventive maintenance uh, and kind of do those breakdowns. And then uh, a work order has uh, expected start and end, scheduled start and end and actual start and end. Uh, by default, based on the asset type and some of the defaults we have defined in the setup, it has already picked up uh, Jury uh, to work on this work order. But uh, we can, I will show you how the scheduling works and, and how you can kind of set up some of this data. Uh, but that's kind of what you have on a work order is where you track uh, when it's expected to start, when it's scheduled to start, when it's actually going to start. Who would be the responsible person and what kind of criticality uh, you have on the work order? This work order has a single line with a single asset. You can add multiple lines to this work order uh, and you can create, you know, service multiple assets as part of the same work order. You have asset documents uh, and asset documents also here. So let's say if they're aware when we define the asset if we attach uh, some you know manuals as to how to go and service an asset then those documents will automatically get related to uh, the work order so when your technician goes and tries to service the work order he should have access to all those all that information at his fingertips okay so in my scenario then and now i have a work order uh, and i'm still the maintenance supervisor so i said okay i, I look at this work order uh, now I need to send somebody to work on this work order. So I need to find a resource to go and work on this. And there are a few ways of you, you, for you to you can do that. You can do that manually by going in and clicking on dispatch. This will be basically going and finding a specific person yourself 
and assigning it to the work order. And you also have the 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 maintenance, uh, the the number of hours needed for this type of inspection defaulted uh, as forecast uh, forecasted time. But you can also write that to say, no, I think this is going to take uh, an hour and a half. Uh, and I want to assign it to Jody, let's say, or you can select somebody else from the list of workers you have in your maintenance crew. So I will go and assign it to Jody. And I have now went in and assigned uh, it to Jody. So now it has a scheduled start, a scheduled end, and the person that's going to go and work on the work order. I can also have lifecycle states on the work order. So right now, since I dispatched somebody, it turned into a scheduled state. And uh, if I look at the update work order state form, then I can kind of put it in progress and pending. So I also have a list of states that I could go and define, and I also have a way of controlling uh, which state transitions are allowed. I'll show you that in the lifecycle uh, uh, model setup uh, in a minute. So right now it's kind of in a scheduled state. Let's say I want to uh, go and put this into in progress state. So the so once kind of Jody starts working on the work order, she can go and update to say yes, yeah, this is in progress. I am going to go and and uh, and work on this work order. That's where the actual start times gets recorded. And let's say Jody goes in there and uh, looks at uh, the air conditioning unit, goes and figures out that, hey, uh, one of the fans not working, so probably the motor for the fan needs replacement. Uh, so what she can do then uh, is she can go in and add another line uh, to this work order, call it line number two, select the same asset. And say now that maintenance type is repair, and and save that. So now you have uh, now you have uh, on the same asset an inspection and a repair uh, that needs to be done. Uh, she can go and log her time for the inspection. So she can go into journals, and she can add a line and say. For inspection, I actually only took, let's say, uh, 0.5 hours, right? And that calculates uh, the amount based on her rate, uh, uh, and that's the cost that will be then associated with the work order. Similarly, let's say we need to go and and get uh, get a motor for uh, for replacement. We can go and log items against the work order also. So we can just come in here, say for repair, I need, let's say, a particular item number. Let's say, um, you know, electrical assembly, let's pick that, but you can define whatever items you can in the system and then the item cost will also be registered and you can then go and post the journals and that cost will then be posted against the work order. Now, just to take a, a little diversion to kind of uh, help you understand how is this costing module working? This costing module in asset management is basically uh, you know, using the functionality that we have in the project module. So let me show you that. Uh, so if you look at my uh, work order, you would see that uh, if I click on any of these lines, uh, the two work order lines, and I go into the general area, I would see that there is a project ID uh, on that line. So there is 188-09 here. And if I click on this one, this is also 188.09. Activity is 445. And in this case, activity is 446. So I have a project with two activities uh, that kind of got created uh, automatically for me behind the scenes. So if I click on this project ID here, what you would see is that, yes, I do have a project and uh, basically 
when we are posting those journals, uh, we are going to be posting those journals uh, in the project module itself. So, uh, so the whole asset management uh, costing module is basically leveraging the functionality in projects where it creates a project and any cost or uh, that you, uh, you, you incur against the work order is posted against the project. So it kind of leverages the existing functionality that was there in the project module. OK, uh, so uh, quick thing about uh, the update work order state. So we have these states. Let me kind of show you where we define these states and where we control the transition between those different states. So if I come into asset management module, let's say co-ops all uh, go into setup, go into work orders, then you will see that here I have lifecycle states. So here I'm defining what states I uh, could have on the work order. And also again, I have uh, the ability to go and say what things could be done at different states at a work order. So if a work order is completed, I don't want someone, somebody to be going and adding another line to the work order or deleting a line from the work order. So you could kind of control a lot of that. This is a very flexible module in terms of how you want to set it up. Uh, so, so the lifecycle states is where you kind of control a lot of those things. Also, we have uh, a concept of lifecycle models. Uh, and here in the model, we go and define what states we want to use out of the defined list. And we have lifecycle updates where we control that, OK, if you are in new state, you could go to release state, but you cannot directly go to schedule state or, or you can go to pending or in progress state. So you can control what transitions could happen between these different states. So that's also very flexible uh, uh, when it comes to asset management. OK, so uh, we. So we had created a. We had created a work order. And on the work order, we did some inspection and we needed to go and repair something, so we added another line. Uh, so let me kind of show you another way you can go in and schedule a resource to go for the repair. You can always use dispatch and you know select a person who should go and work on it, or you can use the schedule board. So here if I click on schedule, then what this will do is it will identify the resource for me automatically uh, from a group of resources that you have defined. It will show me uh, when those resources are available. So here is showing me that the resource 4112 has some eight hours available on, on today. So I can pick that from there and I say I need two hours out of that for this resource to go and work. Uh, so here it will then create a schedule to say 4112 will work from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on this, and I just hit OK. So you could have the system basically go in and assign someone. So in this case, it assigned 4112 is Bill, uh, went in and automatically scheduled a person to go and work on that repair. Now Bill can come in, he can look at his mobile device, he could go in and sort of start updating, uh, and uh, he can also then go and post his uh, hours that he has worked against that work order and he can also go in and log any uh, items that he might have used. Uh, so the cost incurred is posted against the work order. Any other expenses, for example, let's say there were some traveling expenses uh, against the work order. So let's say uh, for repair, uh, you can define categories of, of, of um, expenses, so say travel cost, uh, what resource uh, or was that for? So also this was for bill. Four, one, one, two. Okay, so you can select the resource and then you can say, hey, this was uh, for one way travel and the cost price was let's say 50 bucks right so you can you can have uh, every the items 
the hours as well as any other expenses related to the work order slot against the work order and then you can go in and, and post the journal. If let's say you had several uh, work order lines in that work order and you don't want to do data entry for each line, uh, you can basically just say split hours. So let's say I worked on this 10 asset for 10 hours just and do one entry and kind of hit the split hours button. So it basically assigns one hour against each asset. Uh, so that's how uh, the, the cost uh, and the time spent on, on a work order is tracked. Once everything's done, uh, Bill can come in and basically say, uh, uh, actually, let's not OK. This work order is in progress. And then oops, uh, some issue there. Let's take a look details. Oh, there is some uh, uh, financial dimension set of issue here, which I can resolve later. But once you post your journals, you can then go in and 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 update the lifecycle state to in progress and then to complete it. So that's kind of a lifecycle of a work order. You create a maintenance request. Once you notice something that needs correct your maintenance, you raise a work order, you go on the work order and you log your uh, uh, you know, cost consumptions against that work order and you close the work order. So that's kind of at a very high level, the, the life cycle of a work order. Now let's switch gears and uh, jump into how we can do preventive maintenance. So preventive maintenance usually won't start with somebody raising a maintenance request. Preventive maintenance would start where the systems uh, is going to tell us that, hey, there is some preventive maintenance coming up for an asset. We need to go and plan for that. Or the system would automatically generate a work order for us to go and do some preventive maintenance on an asset. So let's let's take a look at how, how to set those, uh, those preventive maintenance uh, scenarios up. So let me come into asset management, collapse all, so you know where I'm going. Uh, and under setup, you would see that there is a section for preventive maintenance. So if I go into preventive maintenance, I have two things here. I can create maintenance plans and I can create maintenance rounds. The difference between the two is in a maintenance plan, you can go in and say something needs quarterly maintenance and here are the assets that need quarterly maintenance and you can have a maintenance plan and the system will go in and sort of uh, either generate work orders or either generate maintenance schedule lines to tell you that some preventive maintenance is needed. Maintenance round is the same thing, but a different way of looking at it is to say I don't want uh, my crew to kind of run from place to place to place to place to do maintenance. What I want uh, is that if if is to schedule a maintenance round, let's say you have different warehouses and you want to send a technician to that warehouse and take care of multiple things in that warehouse and then go to the next warehouse, then you can kind of uh, set up a maintenance round where you can kind of define that. OK, for this maintenance round, uh, I want to schedule a quarterly maintenance around for the technician to go at a particular warehouse, uh, look at all the assets over there, service all those assets and then come back and then go to another warehouse. So that's kind of how you think about the maintenance plans versus the maintenance rounds. So let's first go into maintenance plans and create a quick maintenance plan here for us. So here uh, what I will do is uh, come in and basically say, I want to create uh, uh, a maintenance plan, uh, Bellevue Campus uh, Maintenance Plan 1, let's say. We'll just name it something like that. And it has a concept of a planning date, is to say when does, uh, when does it need to start planning from? So I'll just kind of set it to the beginning of the year just to make things simple. And then we also have a concept of skip tolerance, uh, meaning that if the planning is going to tell us that, hey, something needs to be, some preventive maintenance needs to be done to this asset, then if there is already a maintenance request or maintenance work order that was executed against that asset, let's say just a few days ago, then we don't want to do that. So we can basically go in and say, if, if that same uh, maintenance was done 30 days ago, or there is already one that is scheduled 30 days from today, 
then we don't want to go and create and the system tell us that we need another maintenance uh, activity on that asset. So I define my skip tolerances. Then I can go and either define a timeline or define a counter. The difference here is that let's say I want to say something needs uh, weekly servicing or monthly servicing, then that's a time based activity so I can uh, use the add timeline. If something is being done, let's say a car needs to be serviced when it reaches 10,000 miles, uh, every 10,000 miles it needs to be serviced, then that will be a counter. So you could have a counter that could be either updated via some IoT integration or via some other kind of integration. We have entities that can help you update, uh, data entities that can help you update those counters. Uh, so if, if if the counter reaches that threshold, then uh, the maintenance plan will automatically raise uh, 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 a maintenance activity for that asset. So you can kind of do it both counter based as well as timeline based. Most common I have seen most customers kind of do the, the timeline based unless they have some way of kind of automating the, the counter uh, addiction process. So here I would say, OK, at timeline I need uh, inspection uh, to be done. Uh, every quarter. Once every quarter, so that's frequency. And then there's another flag here that says auto create. If you uh, click on auto create, it will just basically go and create a work order for you automatically. So if you the moment you click that, it also shows that you need to select a work order type, what kind of work order you need. But I'm going to keep this off right now. And if I keep this off, then it's just going to tell me that I need to do something about uh, you know planning for maintenance for that asset. It won't actually go and automatically create the work order. So you have the flexibility where you want the system to automatically generate a work order or only kind of generate a maintenance plan uh, line against that asset. So I've defined my criteria to say, OK, I need inspection to be done quarterly, but I haven't defined what assets uh, need maintenance. So so to do that, uh, you could come in here and add your assets or you can add an asset type to say I need quarterly maintenance on all my air conditioning units. So if I select asset type of air conditioning unit, then I don't have to go and define those uh, those assets uh, one by one. I can also say I need maintenance activity on assets of at a particular functional location which match this asset type, this um, manufacturer or this model. So you have a, you can define the rules in terms of what assets uh, these uh, this maintenance plan takes a look at. Uh, so to keep things simple, I guess I'll just come in here and manually pick the two air conditioning unit that we added earlier. And now I have a maintenance plan set up. I need to make sure that I mark that maintenance plan active, otherwise it will be inactive and it won't be taken into consideration during planning. So now I have a maintenance plan. Let's now uh, go and plan, uh, run the planning uh, so that maintenance plan then actually creates um, uh, some uh, maintenance schedule lines for us. So to do that, uh, let's collapse all. Let's go into periodic. Let's go into preventive maintenance and then run the schedule maintenance plans. And here I would just put a filter to say asset type is ACU, which is my air conditioning unit, so that's good. So I'm not doing planning on other assets, just to just to in in, in interest of time, and just click OK. So it is basically going in and running the planning behind the scenes. Uh, I could then go into uh, common, and I will look at my maintenance schedule and open my maintenance schedule lines. And here, uh, if I filter by my asset, see, let's just play with that. So you will see that I have now uh, maintenance plan, uh, you know, every quarter. So I have some maintenance activity planned for 4-1, 7-1, and 10-1. And uh, for for my air conditioning in A and B. 
and and I plan for a year. You can you can decide how long you want to plan for. You only plan for the next 14 days. You can plan for the next month, next three months. It's up to you how far you want to run the planning. Every time you run the planning, it takes a look at what work orders already exist. Are there any new assets? Uh, and then what are any changes to your maintenance plan? And basically it regenerates uh, these maintenance schedule lines here every time you run, uh, run planning. Uh, once you have these plans, you can then kind of go and select and uh, basically hit uh, the create work order button. And here you have options to say, OK, uh, do you want to create one work order for all uh, for these two? Uh, assets or you want to create uh, one work order per uh, per asset uh, and and you can you have also a lot of uh, flexibility here in terms of how you are going to create uh, those work orders I can say create just one work order for every asset type that I have and create uh, a preventive maintenance work order. So you can go and then sort of create those. You also have the ability to say uh, 7 1 is probably not a good date. Uh, maybe the plants kind of shut down at that time or it's it's kind of a busy time for us. We don't want to take maintenance at that time. You can then select all these uh, maintenance schedule lines and basically just click on adjust schedule and say we we'll expect it start let's say by 10 days. So instead of 7 1 it will start on 7 11. So here you see it kind of just updated that the expected start. So when you create the work order from it, it kind of will, will schedule that work order to start at 7-11. Okay, so that's how you basically schedule your preventive maintenance uh, where you define a maintenance plan, you run scheduling, scheduling tells you what what uh, is, the, is the scheduled maintenance coming up. And then you have the ability to kind of uh, adjust that and sort of create work orders, uh, preventive maintenance work orders from there. Same thing uh, works in a very similar manner uh, for uh, for maintenance rounds. You basically come in here, you define uh, a maintenance round, say, early. Say start is again. I'll keep it to Jan first. Uh, what's your, uh, you know, finish within ten days, uh, right? And then, uh, do you want to auto create work orders or not, or do you just want to create maintenance lines? And then you can just come in here and add uh, add functional locations to say anything that is in my Bellevue campus would need uh, inspection every quarter. In this case, you are not going in and uh, uh, and basically you're creating just a maintenance round. So if you have certain things uh, where you want to just send a technician on one round and cover multiple assets or multiple locations, you can just kind of plan it that way as well. OK, um, quick time check. Looks like we have 12 minutes to go uh, and I have covered a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. Well, let me talk about uh, resource uh, scheduling. So how do we define our resources for maintenance activities? So let's take a look at that quickly. So in asset management, let me collapse all. I'll go into setup and let's go into workers. And here I have um, uh, many to look at for workers. So this is where I come in and define uh, my maintenance uh, uh, staff who will be working on these maintenance orders. If I hit new, what you will notice here uh, is that these are not something that are specific to asset management. Asset management is leveraging uh, the the workers that we have defined in our uh, SCM module, uh, the human resources module, and basically we can select from there. Um, so I can go in and say Johnny is also part of my maintenance school now, let's say. 
you have a concept of maintenance group. So if you have you know multiple electrician or multiple mechanics in the maintenance staff, you can just basically kind of assign them to a group and uh, we can basically then kind of have the scheduling engine pick somebody from a certain group. So we don't have to uh, always pick uh, to a person. And you can also assign your workers to certain functional locations. So let's say somebody is is you 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 have warehouses or manufacturing plants across the country. You want to probably uh, have your uh, uh, workers kind of associated uh, closer to where where they live, uh, and and the scheduling engine will also take that into consideration uh, during planning. So that's where you go and define your workers, but then uh, how do we know uh, what assets those workers or what uh, type of maintenance activities those workers work on? So that's where we uh, look at the responsible maintenance workers form. And here we can, we have basically a way to set up some rules to say for air conditioning unit in, uh, in Bellevue campus, I want, uh, let's say John uh, to be responsible for that. So when we schedule the work order, uh, John will be automatically recommended uh, for, for scheduling. So that's how you, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of you can see you can even go down to the asset level to say this particular asset is serviced by this particular person. Uh, or if the maintenance job is preventive, then I pick Johnny. Otherwise, if it's corrective, I pick somebody else. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of defining the rules of who gets scheduled to go and work, work on a particular work order. There is also a concept of uh, preferred maintenance worker. So you could have a crew, but there could be uh, some preference to say this type of problem, this person knows it the best and he should be the one going and kind of resolving that or we should be giving him priority. Uh, then we can go in and define our preferred maintenance worker for certain assets or certain maintenance job, job types or category and, and we can define that as well. Um, so so, so these, these setups are considered while uh, sort of going and automatically scheduling uh, the workers. So uh, we, if we look at uh, work orders, and if we look at, uh, then, then there is a, a working on periodic. So, so there is scheduled work order. So I showed you how to generate the maintenance work order lines uh, by creating your maintenance plan and then running, uh, you know, either scheduled maintenance plans or scheduled maintenance around. Uh, but to go and actually schedule particular uh, resources uh, for those work orders that you have, you can basically run this bad job here to say schedule work orders. And that scheduled work order will look at your worker setup and the rules you have defined to say who goes and works on those uh, those work orders or those maintenance types and categories and assets. Then the scheduled work order process will take that into account and go and basically automatically schedule a bunch of work orders at once. So you don't have to schedule each one individually. Um, also, if we look at asset management parameters, so if we collapse all, go into setup and look at asset management parameters, there is a tab for work order scheduling, and this gives you a lot of option in terms of how uh, you want to influence the scheduling. Uh, you can uh, control a lot of these parameters to say how many, what, per, what score you want to give to the responsible worker setup, versus the preferred maintenance worker set up uh, and, uh, and, and you can control how to influence the scoring that the scheduling engine will use in terms of uh, the assignment uh, of, of, of those resources to those more products. Uh, again, I think uh, with, with like every module, you have the asset management parameters where you can control the number sequences 
and, and the various other things. You always have a default location and a standard calendar. So if you're not defining specific calendars on your resources or your locations, then it will use those calendars. So that's that setup is also very important from a scheduling standpoint. I think I have uh, covered uh, most of the things I wanted to cover in my demo. Um, I think it's probably now time to open it up for, uh, for some Q&A. Uh, here are some resources that you can go look at. We have standard documentation published on our doc site. Uh, we also have e-learning training uh, getting really soon on the e-learning portal. So uh, if you want to do step by step learning, you can also look at uh, the e-learning portal. Uh, uh, soon uh, there should be asset management specific training available there as well. With that, let's spend some time on, on question and answers. So I'm going to my Q&A panel and I'm going to start picking up some, some questions and answers. I think Dana has been helping answer a lot of these. So thanks, Dana. Uh, please uh, type your questions in the Q&A panel and uh, we can, I will try to answer as many as I can in the next few minutes. OK, I'm seeing a question here. Uh, would I be able to see what a resource availability is? For example, our assigned to a maintenance task as opposed to hours uh, available for that resource. Yes, so you do have uh, some uh, some capacity uh, views here. So if we come into asset management and go into inquiries and go into uh, schedule, you can look at capacity load. And uh, you can use capacity load by workers or by maintenance worker group and basically look at how much uh, work uh, your maintenance staff and what capacity you are utilizing them at. Uh, also, when I showed you where to go and define your workers, uh, those workers are re basically resources that you have defined in your uh, organization administration and let's look at uh, uh, resources and uh, each each person there is a resource and on that resource you have a calendar associated with that resource and in that calendar you can mark uh, when that resource is available uh, it on which days is available from what time in the day to what time uh, in the evening is available or what shift he is working and what are the, some of the holidays uh, uh, or exceptions in the calendar uh, you can add and the scheduling engine will take that into account. Uh, when is the timeline for universal resource scheduling? I think you're talking about how do we kind of use the same resource for uh, in production orders as well as for asset management. I think Dana can answer that. Dana, you have any any update on that? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's not available currently. We are considering it in the roadmap. Uh, will asset management be licensed under finance or supply chain? Uh, I believe. Uh, and Dana, you have any specifics on that? Uh, how the licensing works around asset management? I thought it's. Uh, yep, there is a there is an additional license required, so it's part of the base code, but there is a an additional SKU for asset management, and it's it's basically based on the number of assets that the customer uses. So talk with your sales um, representatives on that, on the pricing and such. Okay. Uh, there is a question about asset. Uh, yeah, asset description can be added as well. Uh, the asset depreciation, I kind of first read that as depreciation would work the standard way the fixed asset works. So when you define your asset. Uh, in asset management, when you go and define your. Oops, 
uh, define your assets. You okay. Let me go to an asset. When you define an asset, you also do basically again pick the fixed asset number and the asset depreciation and the whole uh, financial process around it will work based on the fixed asset module that we always have in the product. Uh, can counter information come through an ODBC connection from other database? So yes, uh, you if you have if you have counters defined on your fixed asset and you are doing maintenance based on the counter, uh, then uh, basically what we have out of the box is the data entity uh, through our data management framework. So it's available both on from an OData standpoint as well as uh, you know uh, all the interfaces that DMF supports. Uh, file integration and all. So if you have an, uh, the counter in some ODBC database, then you could write some you know, quick thing, maybe a quick flow that connects to your ODBC database from time to time and sort of updates the value of the counter using the, the data entity that we have already provided. Uh, so that could be a pretty quick integration that you can build up and make sure the counters get updated in asset management. Uh, and uh, if you have maintenance plans based on those counters, then it automatically generates a work order based on that. OK, I think uh, we are one minute over our scheduled time. Uh, AJ, uh, uh, thanks everybody for uh, joining the Tech Talk today. Hopefully uh, this was helpful for you. Uh, we will uh, try to maybe do a few more around specific uh, deep topics in asset management in the future. Uh, but thanks for joining today. Thank you, and I'd like to mention our event production team strives to be a leader in delivering online content. We ask that you help us reach this goal by providing feedback. I've just posted a link in the Q&A panel that is a link to a short survey for the web conference, and we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope that you found today's information helpful, and if you enjoyed today's web conference, have feedback on how we could provide you with a better event or would like to submit topics for future web conferences, this is your chance to let us know. We do appreciate the time you take to do this and thank you for your support. This concludes today's web conference. The recording and a copy of the presentation deck will be available within five business days. Please look for an email from Learning Media that will include details on how to access them. I'd like to thank the presenter, uh, Sachin and Dana, and thank you, the audience, for logging in and joining us today.